Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And I'm gonna bet that most of you know what words are about to flow out of my mouth. But come on, it's your tradition by now, isn't it? Skyrim is an exorbitantly large game. One thrusting players into a rich land with compelling narratives, interesting characters, and exciting conflicts. And even what is almost eight years later, The Elder Scrolls V remains a popular RPG. Having been out for so long, one would be reasonable to assume that all of Skyrim's secrets have been uncovered, her easter eggs revealed, and subtle references exposed. But such an assumption may not be the most accurate. And I'm willing to bet this year's old game still has something it's hiding from you. So sit back and relax as we explore yet another 10 tiny details you may still have missed in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Part 46. Starting off, Upon the Dragonborn's first visit to Riften's Marketplace, chances are you'll be approached by a shady-looking snake oil salesman named Brynjolf. He'll invite you to participate in a small scheme he's concocted in exchange for some coin. Of course, we later learn that Brynjolf is a ranking member of the town's thieves' guild, and much more than just a scamming potion vendor. But I digress. What you may not have known about this whole interaction is that when the man first walks up to you, his dialogue will actually differ depending on how much gold is in the player's inventory. If you have less than about 300 septums, he'll say this. Running a little light in the pockets, lad? Your pockets. They're a little low on coin. I can tell. But, if you have more than 300 coin in your pockets, this will be his dialogue. Never done an honest day's work in your life for all that coin you carry, eh lad? I'm saying you've got the coin, but you didn't earn a septum of it honestly. I can tell. Next on our list, after completing Malakath's Daedric quest, The Cursed Tribe, the god of outcasts and the ostracized will reward the Dragonborn with a unique warhammer. Volendrung. The item is pretty powerful, dealing a comfortable 25 points of base damage per swing, plus boasting an enchantment that allows its wielder to absorb 50 points of an opponent's stamina per hit. It doesn't just have great stats though. Believe it or not, there's some pretty cool lore attached to this Warhammer as well. According to legend, thousands of years ago, before Tamriel was entirely tamed by men and myrrh, a clan of Dwemer needed a new home. Unable to decide on exactly where to move, their leader simply threw his warhammer across the continent, and it ultimately landed in Hammerfell, hence the province's name. That hammer was of course Volendrung. How Malakath ended up getting the weapon is still unclear though. Nonetheless, if the player has Volendrung equipped and attempts to interact with a guard, there's an ever so small chance it may trigger them to say a distinct line of dialogue commenting on your unique choice of an arm. What do you aim to do with that hammer, friend? Knock down a house? <whistles> that is one big hammer. Coming in at number three, the Dawnguard DLC thrusts the Dragonborn into a conflict between an ancient clan of vampires, known as the Volokar, who plan on permanently blotting out the sun, and an old order of vampire hunters, the Dawnguard, who are bent on stopping them. Well, did you know that the Dawnguard DLC wasn't actually our first introduction to the Volkahar clan in the Elder Scrolls universe? Indeed, the book Immortal Blood, which first appeared in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, though also is featured in Skyrim, tells the tale of a vampire hunter from Cyrodiil named Movarth, and features an excerpt where he speaks to a priest knowledgeable on the subject of the undead. The priest starts describing some of the vampire covens he's familiar with, and mentions that in the eastern regions of Skyrim, therein lies the Volkahar clan. In the book, this priest describes the Volkahars as having an affinity for all sorts of ice and cold, which makes sense, them being in Skyrim, stating they have breath so chilling it could freeze the blood of their victims, and that they lived below frozen lakes and waters, with the special power to reach through the ice and grab their victims without it breaking. After this, the man goes on to continue discussing other blood-sucking factions. But as it turns out, and we all know, the Volkahar are a very real threat. Though in The Elder Scrolls V, they don't have frost breath nor live below frozen lakes. My best guess is Bethesda realized that would be a bit difficult to do, and decided to go an alternative direction. 
Or perhaps the group simply evolved since this book was first penned. No matter, it appears this clan has existed in public consciousness for quite a while. For a fourth spot, speaking of those vampires, within their castle, specifically within Valerica's centuries-abandoned laboratory and study, we can find the only set of pre-spawned dragon bones in the entire game sitting nonchalantly on a table. This tells us two things. One, the Volcar clan must at very least predate the Dragon War of the Morefic Era, thousands of years ago. And they likely had some form of interaction with the Dovas themselves. Whether that was just in the form of trading for their remains, or even participating in some type of conflict is unclear. Whatever the case, considering the vampires clearly at least know the dragons exist, their help would have been appreciated in fighting Alduin. Halfway through at number 5, the book, Uncommon Taste, is Tamriel's most popular cookbook. It was written by the legendary, world-renowned chef known only as The Gourmet, and can be found in the kitchen of just about any respected culinary enthusiast. Well, the first recipe featured in the text is for a dish called the Sunlight Souffle. At first, reading through it, everything seems to make sense, at least it did for me, but someone with the knowledge of spices may notice something very wrong with some of what this dish calls for, as it demands a cup of ground nutmeg. This may not seem like a big deal, again, it didn't to a microwave chef like me, However, nutmeg is a rather toxic spice that when overconsumed, i.e. more than just a couple of teaspoons at most, has a tendency to make one incredibly sick. And an entire cup of it would almost certainly be lethal if you didn't throw it up. Especially considering the serving size of this recipe is just one person. Even if, after ingesting that extreme amount of spice, you somehow survived, you would be incredibly sick. And frankly, nutmeg is so strong, the food would probably taste pretty horrible. So, perhaps this greatest chef in Tamriel isn't as great as we've been led to believe. Sixth, we're shifting our focus back to the Thieves Guild. Early in their storyline, shortly after you've helped Brynjolf pull off that con we mentioned earlier, they'll send you on a mission to recover money owed to them by a number of debtors. Said debtors will be quite reluctant to pay up. So the Dovakin will have to be a bit persuasive, either cleverly using their tongue or fists, to get the individuals in question to give in. Alas, once you've gotten all the gold, simply give it to Brynjolf to complete the quest and earn a reward of your own. However, something you may not have known you could do is that after collecting all the coin that's owed, which should be a couple hundred septums at least, rather than return it to the guild, you can simply spend it all yourself. If you choose to do this, and report back with less gold in your inventory than the guild told you to go collect, you'll unlock some otherwise hidden dialogue, in which Brynjolf will call you out on trying to skim some of the profits, and refuse to allow you to progress until you return with all the money that's owed. Take a listen. I trust everything went well. So I've heard. Thanks to you, this should be the last time they forget to pay. One small detail, though. I need all the gold they gave you. No one skims around here. Come back when you've got every last coin. Next, this one actually concerns Creation Club content, which I know you all love so much, but bear with me. The Spell My Armor creation adds in a new set of custom armor, in three different variants. In order to get a hold of these pieces, you'll have to first complete a short quest and loot it off the bodies of some fallen men. In that quest, we read a book that states those men belong to a faction from High Rock, the Order of the Crypt, also known as the War Mages of Shornhelm. This is a nod to the Elder Scrolls I arena, wherein the War Mages was the name of the Breton city of Shornhelm's gladiatorial team. So it looks like this new armor belonged to some old friends. Coming in at number 8, while we're on the topic of old items, upon completing the Dark Brotherhood quest, Death Incarnate, and Astrid's betrayal is revealed, the player will be able to take her unique dagger, the Blade of Woe. You can also earn it by murdering Astrid to death the first time you meet her in the abandoned shack. It's a powerful little thing, dealing strong damage, plus absorbing 10 health per swing. An assassin's dream. 
However, as you can probably guess, judging by the context of this spot in the video, Skyrim isn't the first time in the Elder Scrolls universe that we've been exposed to the Blade of Woe. Indeed, in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion's Dark Brotherhood questline, it was a special ebony dagger that we'd receive as a gift from Lucian Lachance. Before setting out on the quest, a knife in the dark. And once the Dark Brotherhood's narrative had been completed in that game, the Night Mother herself would place a special enchantment on the object, making it even more powerful. How it eventually ended up in the conniving little claws of someone like Astrid, however, is still unknown. Getting close to the end here at number 9, we have the intriguing story of how Cradle Crush Rock must have gotten its name. Cradle Crush Rock is a small giant's encampment located southwest of Gallows Rock and northeast of the Throat of the World. It's home to a single, rather defensive giant and his mammoths. Nearby will be a couple of fires, and on one of which, an ox will be roasting. Though, these campfires aren't the only landmarks that define this location. As on the western end of the camp will be a large boulder, and underneath that boulder, Blood and bones will be scattered all over the place, suggesting that this giant picked it up and threw it on a bunch of people who were nearby. Not much more to say. A gruesome ending for these individuals, but an appropriate name for this camp. And finally, last on our list, we have the curious case of the single piece of cooked boar meat. I know, that sounds kind of weird, but bear with me. The Dragonborn DLC added in a number of new items, including a variety of foods and alchemical ingredients. Among those was boar meat, a roll consumable that would restore two points of health, and not much elf. Raw consumables generally tend not to be that useful. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it's impossible to actually cook boar meat, so you're kind of stuck with the measly item as is. However, there is a single piece of cooked boar meat that can be found at the Morvane Manor in Raven Rock. This is the only instance of cooked boar meat appearing in the entire game, making it among the rarest items in Skyrim. Now, there's not much more to say here, this series is again called Tiny Details, but still, a neat item for any collector of rare oddities to definitely keep in mind. And with that, we are going to wrap up. Our 46th installment of 10 tiny details you may still have missed in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Thanks for popping in, everybody. Which of the facts and tiny details surprised you the most? And what hidden Skyrim secrets have I yet to delve into? Leave a comment down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. If you would like your name in this little producers tab in the credits, consider clicking that join button and becoming a channel member. Or just donating to the Murder to Death and Gratitude tier on Patreon. Anyway, again, thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.